headlines are screaming. James Webb Telescope challenges Big Bang Theory. But before you grab your pitchforks, let's unpack this galactic mystery. We'll navigate the cosmic ocean, decode key terms, and uncover the truth behind this hype. So, buckle up. So let's first understand how can the telescopes see what was going on at the time of Big Bang. Imagine this. Every time we look up into the sky at night time, gazing at the stars and galaxies, we are actually embarking on a voyage back in time. How is it possible? The answer lies in the fundamental nature of light and its journey through the vast expanse of space. You see, light travels at an incredible speed of about 299,792 kilometers per second. Despite this astounding speed, it still takes time for light to traverse the enormous distances between celestial objects and us here on Earth. This means that the light we observe today from distant stars and galaxies is not as it is in our current moment but as it was when it first embarked on its journey across the cosmos. Take, for instance, the nearest star to our solar system, Proxima Centauri. The light we see from this star is about 4.24 years old. It has traveled a distance of 4.24 light years to grace our night sky. In a sense, we are seeing Proximo Centauri not as it is today, but as it was over four years ago. As we extend our gaze further into the cosmos, the journey through time deepens. The Andromeda galaxy, our galactic neighbor, lies about two and a half million light years away. The light that reaches us from Andromeda shows us how this galaxy looked two and a half million years ago. This cosmic time travel reaches its peak when we observe galaxies that are billions of light years away. These distant galaxies offer us a window into an era close to the Big Bang itself. The light from these galaxies embarked on its journey billions of years ago, carrying with it secrets from the dawn of the universe. Okay, but how do we know how many light years away the objects we are observing are? It's not as simple as pulling out a tape measure, but it's super cool. Let me give you a quick tour. First off, we have got redshift. Think of the universe as a stretching balloon. As it grows, light from galaxies stretches too, turning redder. By seeing how red the light is, Astronomers get a hint of how far away a galaxy is. Kind of like hearing an ambulance siren change pitch as it zooms past. Then there is something called a stellar parallax. This is a neat trick for nearby stars. As Earth orbits the Sun, stars seem to wiggle a bit. This wiggle helps us figure out their distance. A bit like blinking one eye, then the other to see things move. We also use standard candles. Some stars pulse in a special way that tell us their actual brightness. Comparing this with how bright they appear from Earth, we can calculate their distance. It's like guessing how far away a lamp is based on its brightness. Alright, I got it, but before we get to the Big Bang news, can you tell me a little bit about the new James Webb Telescope and what's so special about it? The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short, was launched in December 2021. This beast of a telescope is Hubble's big brother on steroids. So why is JWST such a big deal? 
Well, for starters, it's got this amazing ability to see in infrared. Unlike Hubble, which was all about visible and ultraviolet light, JWST can peek through cosmic dust and gas clouds. It's like having X-ray vision for the universe, revealing the faintest glows from the earliest galaxies that popped up right after the Big Bang. But that's not all. JWST has a massive mirror. We're talking 6.5 meters across, almost three times the size of Hubble's. This giant mirror lets JWST capture more light, which means it can see fainter and more distant objects in space. It's like having a super-powered telescope that can see back in time. And the gadgets on this thing are top-notch. JWST carries four advanced instruments that give us the nitty-gritty details about everything from exoplanets to galaxies far, far away. These instruments can tell us what stuff is made of, how hot it is, and even how it is moving. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. So what even is visible infrared and ultraviolet? Are these different from light? So you know light, right? Well, it's way more than just what we see. Actually, what we see, the colors of flowers, the sky, everything around us, is just a tiny part of what's called electromagnetic spectrum. Think of visible light as a small section of a huge radio dial. It runs from violet at around 380 nanometers to red at about 700 nanometers. That's the part our eyes can turn into or tune into. But wait, there's more. Beyond the red, there is infrared light. It's like the superhero vision that lets you see heat and is used in things like night vision goggles. And beyond violet, the ultraviolet light is the sneaky one that gives you sunburns and used in some cool medical stuff. And then there are the extremes, x-rays and gamma rays, super short and packed with energy. Great for medical scans and checking out cosmic stuff but you don't want to mess with them too much because they can be harmful. And on the other side, there are microwaves and radio waves. Yep, the same ones for cooking and jamming to your favorite tunes. They are longer than the infrared and super important for communication and heating. Our eyes can't see these types of light because, well, they're just, we are not just built for it. But thanks to some nifty gadgets in science, we can detect and use these invisible lights to do amazing things, like exploring space, diagnosing diseases, and even inventing new tech. I mean, all right, so if JWST is using infrared light and the Hubble is using UV light, where are all these amazing photos coming from? Great question. It's pretty clever what scientists do to make this happen. So basically, telescopes looking at non-visible light don't give us images we can see straight away. But scientists have some cool tricks up their sleeves to change that. First, there is color mapping. It's like giving a special color code to different intensities of light that telescopes pick up. For instance, they might color the hotter areas red and the cooler ones blue in an infrared image. It's all about turning these invisible light intensities into colors we can actually see. Then there are things like spectral analysis. Telescopes can figure out the exact type of light an, ob an object emits. This tells us about the object's composition, temperature, and even how it is moving. It's a bit like identifying a musical note to learn about the instrument playing it. And there is also computer modeling. This is where scientists use computers to predict how different kind of light 
interact with stuff in space. It helps them create more accurate and detailed images. All these methods are about making invisible light visible and understandable to us. While these images aren't exactly what we'd see with our eyes, they show us incredible things hidden in the universe. All right then, I mean, can we get back to how the news on the JWST is challenging the Big Bang Theory now? All right, back to the news now. So JWST hasn't exactly turned the Big Bang Theory on its head, but it is definitely stirring things up a bit, especially about how the early universe formed. For starters, JWST has spotted some really old galaxies like these newborn ones that popped up just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. And they're surprisingly big, way bigger than what we thought galaxies from that time would look like. It's making us rethink how fast stars formed back in the day. Then there is what JWST is telling us about the first stars and black holes. It's peering into the faint light from these ancient cosmic objects, which might show us some cool new stuff that doesn't quite match up with our current ideas. Another thing JWST is poking at is how fast the universe expanded after the Big Bang. Some of its findings hint that this expansion might have happened quicker than we previously thought. It's like updating the universe's speed limit sign. And let's not forget about the dark matter and dark energy. The universe's biggest mysteries. JWST has been looking at how gravity bends light from distant galaxies and the overall structure of space, which could give us new clues about what these mysterious things are and how they work. Now all these findings from JWST are super exciting, but they are still fresh. Scientists are busy analyzing and interpreting them. While these discoveries challenge some parts of the Big Bang Theory, they are not exactly disproving it. Think of it more like adding new pieces to a puzzle. Remember, the Big Bang Theory is still solid. It has got a ton of evidence backing it up from all sorts of astronomical studies. What JWST is doing is adding some spicy new details to the mix, which is super cool and important for our understanding of universe's origins. My goal was to help you understand these news reports by understanding some of the basic concepts of image, light and telescopes. I hope this will help you enjoy and understand uh, the news reports that come in this space. Let me leave you with this fascinating image of galaxy AZTECC71. This was born just 900 million years after the Big Bang. This is the earliest galaxy image we have ever had. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like share and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment as well.